Skullborn we can learn from different views. So if you view Skullborn from anterior aspect and if we learn that is called as Noma Frontalis. And if we view the skull from posterior aspect then it is called as Noma Occipitalis. The lateral view of the skull is called as lat Noma Lateralis. And if you view from above downwards that is called as Noma Verticalis. The last we have to learn the skull from below upwards that means basal view or inferior view that is called as Noma Basalis. There are several points to be remembered when learning the Noma Basalis or the inferior view of the skull. But it is made very easy by dividing the entire base of the skull into three parts. The anterior part, middle part and the posterior part. The anterior part consists of the alveolar arch and the hard palate. And the middle part is the area between an imaginary line which is passing through the anterior margin of foramen magnum. And that is the part in front of this imaginary line and the part behind this hard palate. This is the region called as middle part. And the part behind this imaginary line, this is the area called as posterior part. So we will divide into these three parts and we will learn in detail each part. So first let us go through what are the features to be learned in anterior part of Norma Basalis. So in anterior part of Norma Basalis, first we have to identify the upper alveolar arch or superior alveolar arch. The alveolar arch is present in the jawbone. So this upper alveolar arch is a part of maxilla or the upper jaw. So this is a curved process on which we have the sockets for the upper set of teeth. So this is the upper alveolar arch. And remember again within this alveolar arch we have the hard palate. So the palate that is the roof of oral cavity that shows two parts. The anterior major portion is hard because that is made up of bony constituting components. And the posterior part is soft because that part is devoid of any bony structural component. So this is hard palate anteriorly and this is soft palate posteriorly. But remember in this Norma Basalis we can clearly appreciate this hard palate region. So this is the hard palate. This is within this horseshoe shaped alveolar arch. So let us learn in detail about this hard palate. The hard palate structurally that is formed by various bonds. And these constituting bonds are very well sutured. So that is held together by the sutural joints. What are the bonds? So we have the palatine processes of maxillae. So from right maxilla the palatine process. From the left maxilla the palatine process. So these palatine processes are sutured or fused in the midline and this suture which is located in the midline of the hard palate that is called as intermaxillary suture this is directed anterior posteriorly similarly posterior one third portion of the hard palate that is formed by palatine bond exact bond exactly speaking horizontal plates of palatine bond and these horizontal plates of right and left palatine bonds, these are fused in the midline or sutured in the midline. This suture between two horizontal plates of palatine bond, this is called as interpalatine suture. So this is intermaxillary suture, this is interpalatine suture. Again we have in between palatine process of maxilla and horizontal plate of palatine bond. In between these two we have another suture here. This is called as palatomaxillary suture. Palatomaxillary suture. So intermaxillary suture, interpalatine suture and here we have palatomaxillary suture. Remember palatomaxillary sutures are directed side to side and intermaxillary and interpalatine sutures are directed anterior posteriorly. Now if we observe very carefully all these sutures are resembling like a cross. So that's why this suture, this is called as cruciform suture. So cruciform suture is an important part to be identified in the hard palate that is in the Norma basalis. So next is 
the posterior free border of the heart palate. So here it is very clear that posterior free border of the heart palate that will show a midline projection that is called as posterior nasal spine. And just anterior to this posterior free border we have a crust here. This crust is called as palatine crust. Remember this posterior free border and the area between this posterior free border and the palatine crust that area is providing attachment to an aponeurosis that is called as palatine aponeurosis the palatine aponeurosis in detail we will learn when we are learning the soft palate so now let us analyze what are the other features located in this hard palate first to explain is an important foramen that is called as greater palatine foramen so we have on either side this is the greater palatine foramen here also you have to expect greater palatine foramen as the name suggests you this is bigger that's why it is called as greater remember through the greater palatine foramen certain vessels and nerves are coming and entering to the palate that is greater palatine nerves and vessels so I will show you in another picture, okay, greater palatine nerves and vessels. And again, behind this greater palatine foramen, remember the location of greater palatine foramen is more towards the posterior aspect of heart palate, just behind the third molar tooth. Just behind the greater palatine foramen, here you can see tiny foramena usually one or two foramina are there. These foramina are called as lesser palatine foramen, foramina and these lesser palatine foramina that will be located at the pyramidal process of palatine bone. So here we have pyramidal process of palatine bone. This is the horizontal plate of palatine bone. This is the lower part of pyramidal process of palatine bone. So behind the greater palatine foramen on the pyramidal process we can see lesser palatine foramina and these foramina are transmitting lesser palatine nerves and vessels which are supplying to the soft palate region. Now, the greater palatine nerves and vessels which are passing through this greater palatine foramen that will enter to the heart palate and here you have a groove through this groove that will come forwards. Meanwhile, that will provide several twigs to this heart palate region and this adjacent gum region that is greater palatine foramen and greater palatine vessels and nerves and these nerves and vessels are again coming forwards and that will reach to a fossa here this is called as incisive fossa remember this incisive fossa is located just behind the central incisor teeth of upper jaw and this incisive fossa again if you trace that will be passing through a canal will be located at this incisive fossa region that is called as incisive canals and these incisive canals are located usually in the walls of this incisive fossa and these canals are leading to the floor of nasal cavity so that is a communication between nasal cavity and this heart palate region remember one nerve is coming from nasal cavity downwards to the heart palate that is called as nasopalatine nerve and remember our greater palatine artery its terminal part will pass through this incisive fossa and incisive canal in order to enter to the nasal cavity region so the artery is going upwards but the nerve is coming downwards so that is about incisive fossa and incisive canals and this heart palate is arched from side to side and also before backwards and remember in this heart palate you can see several pits which are for lodging tiny minor salivary glands called as palatine salivary glands so i would like to explain you the features in this picture especially the vessels and nerves so remember through the greater palatine foramen so this is the greater palatine artery which is entering or passing through this groove in front of greater palatine foramen meanwhile it will give several twigs to these regions further it will come forwards and it is entering to the incisive fossa 
And remember, meanwhile, from above downwards through the incisive fossa, another nerve is coming downwards that is nasopalatine nerve. And along with the artery, you have another nerve that is greater palatine nerve. This greater palatine nerve also will run forwards along with the ancillary. But here in this picture, one side artery, artery is shown and the other side the nerve is shown. And remember this greater palatine nerve that is coming from the pterygopalatine ganglion and that will come and supply to this palatine region. Similarly, along with that you have the lesser palatine nerves also that will go back to the soft palate region through the lesser palatine foramen. So that lesser palatine nerve and vessels are shown here that is going backwards to the soft palate region. And this is another picture to show you both greater palatine artery and greater palatine nerve. And this is lesser palatine artery and lesser palatine nerves which are going to the soft palate region. And remember to the naso palate, posterior nasal spine this is the structure which is attached. There is a muscle called as musculus uveolus. And you can clearly see at the palatine aponeuro, the palatine aponeurosis is attached to the palatine crust region and the posterior free border of the heart palate. And let us see how these structures are appearing in the norma basalis on the skull. So this is the region of heart palate and this is the area of upper alveolar arch. So this is horseshoe shaped and bearing the sockets for the upper set of teeth and behind within this you have the heart palate region. So first you identify the cruciform suture. So the cruciform suture, the components are anteriorly you have the intermaxillary suture between two palatine processes of maxilla. This is intermaxillary suture and posteriorly, posterior one third is interpalatine suture between two horizontal plates of palatine bone. And remember in between the palatine process of maxilla and horizontal plate of palatine bone this is called as palatomaxillary suture palatomaxillary suture so that is extending side to side so everything together forms the cruciform suture and identify the posterior free border of the heart palate and just in front of that the palatine crust and i would like to show you the greater palatine foramen here Okay, so the greater palatine foramen, so that is in front, very close to the third molar tooth. And this greater palatine foramen is leading to a groove forwards, through which the greater palatine nerves and vessels, these are passing. And behind the greater palatine foramen, this is the lesser palatine foramen, uh, that is in the pyramidal process of palatine bond, that will transmit the lesser palatine nerves and vessels. So these are the points to be remembered here in the anterior tooth and this is the incisive fossa behind the central incisor teeth, upper central incisor teeth.